that's the law. So the thing is, the law said a lot of stuff. Some stuff does still still pertain. Because God said, you know what? And even Jesus came along and reiterated a lot of the things that God said within the law. But then we have to look at the fact that God did say it, and he said it for a purpose. But what did the passage really say? The word is, and I have it written down on your paper, mishkeviv ishshash, something like that. I don't speak Hebrew yet. But the translation is, after the manner of lying with a woman by the introduction of the male member. And that's coming from Baruch Levine. Um, it's from a Torah commentary in 1989, a traditional Hebrew text um, with the new JPS translation, Jewish Publication Society. It says that the translation of this Hebrew word is after the manner of lying with a woman by the introduction of the male member. We already know that the law was given to the people once they escaped the exodus, but where were the people when the law was given? Weren't they in the wilderness? They were in the wilderness. They were in the wilderness. Common sense kind of tells us why God came up with some of these laws. Because what happens if you do not cook pork properly with under enough heat and for an extended amount of time? It worms. It worms. What happens if you do the same with raw shellfish that hasn't been properly taken care of a lot of times? So, uh, no, it has, um, but if you don't like certain shellfish, if you don't cook it, um, like you can't kill it and then cook it, you have to like kill it while it's cooked. It's a certain way you have to cook shellfish. Mm -hmm. I'll not explain it. But their blood or something in their blood is poisonous, and if it seeps out through the meat, the meat becomes poisonous. You can't cook it. You can't kill it before you cook it. That's all. You have to cook. You have to cook it alive. But if they're in the wilderness and they are way the the sea is way over here, way over there, by the time they get it back to the camp, it's dead. God made these for a reason. He wasn't just coming up with just crazy old laws. Now, part of it was because God wanted his people to be holy. He is setting them apart. He put some standards on them because guess what? You're mine now. You wanted to come out of Egypt. So yes, I'm going to tell you how to, how I want you to act. But he made some rules that these people need to live by for their own safety, for their own good. Because if he didn't make those rules, if they weren't laws, they might try to do it and end up with worms, end up dead because of poison. The Bible is talking about the male member entering into another male. The male member entering into a dirty place. It's not necessarily talking about just with another man. It's talking about with a female as well. It's not talking about the act of a two loving couple getting together. It's talking about that the, the point blank of it is don't put it where it's not clean. Because guess what? You're in the wilderness. You cannot clean yourself good enough. So you're going to get an infection and, and whatever <coughs> else is dirty. Same thing, not so much even, and, and, and the same thing goes with men lying with women. You're not supposed to do it because you are not clean when you are living in the, we can't clean yourself well enough. It was for their protection. Same reason God made all, most of all of these laws for their protection. I want to take care of you. He's giving them the law. So they were in the desert. So the New Testament says some stuff about the law as well. It says some stuff about how we treat the law nowadays. The New Testament is basically after <coughs> Christ and what Christ and what the, the disciples and what the apostles had to say about the law. So if we turn to Galatians 3, 10 through 14. I have an issue. What is Galatians? It's the New Testament after Ephesians? Oh, before Ephesians, I'm sorry. Ephesians. <laughs> Between oh, first oh, Corinthians and okay. Galatians 3, 10 through 14. I read it. 
For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, because it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue doing everything written in the book of the law. Now it is clear that no one is justified before God by the law, because the righteous will live by faith. But the law is not based on faith. Instead, the one who does these things will live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, because it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. So, when you follow the law, and basically what he's trying to say is, it's almost impossible to follow all of these rules and regulations. It is it's very hard to follow the rules. That's why God had so many atonement offerings. Because even then, way back when, they found it very hard to follow every letter of that law. And so there was sin atonement. There was all these little sacrifices. I'm going to make a sacrifice for this. I sinned. And he had to go to the priest. He went through a big, long, drawn-out you know, ceremony, basically, to be washed clean. So Christ became the curse for us so that we could be free from having to live by every letter of the law. And that does not say we do not strive to be holy. See, there's a difference between just relying on grace and living in grace. You know, grace is the fact that I know that Jesus covers me, but I'm not, but because of that, because he makes such a wonderful sacrifice, a huge sacrifice on my behalf, I'm not gonna abuse that. I'm not gonna abuse grace, but I do know that because of grace, I'm no longer bound by the law. So can we read James 2, 8 through 13? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partially, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. <clears throat> For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Hmm. So, even if we say, well, I'm going to follow the law, and even if there is one point, just one, one little thing, we put on polyester one day or something, we are guilty of sinning against the entire law. People try to hold us accountable for Leviticus 18.22, Leviticus 20, 13, without even realizing, okay, <coughs> you holding us accountable for Leviticus 18, 22, but hello, you just broke the law on Leviticus 17, 10. What is your excuse for breaking the law on Leviticus 17, 10, mister that wants to condemn me for Leviticus 18, 22? The answer is going to be grace. Grace. Grace is, is what? I, I have grace. Well, does that same grace not apply? Is God's grace not strong enough? Is the blood not strong enough to wash me too? If, if that is even what the scripture is talking about. Now, that's assuming that that is what the scripture is saying, that, that it's talking about homosexuality. Let's say it is. Now, why wouldn't grace cover it? Now, I beg to differ that it's not talking about homosexuality. From the passage here, the actual Hebrew version, it's talking about sodomy. It does not mention lesbians at all. We are homosexual. We're same gender loving. But it does not talk about women at all. It doesn't say one time in the scripture, in Leviticus, in Deuteronomy, woman that has slept with another woman or a woman that is kissing another woman or a woman that is, you know, 